Okay, hi, uh, my name is Mike Spear. Uh, I'm a Phi logic designer at IBM. And uh, today we're gonna go over the ODSA pipe adapter we've been working on for a year or so. Um, uh, so this is the slide that we've been showing various in the tracks on Tuesday and again today. Um, so I wanna call your attention to the top uh, diagram there, the open DDD interface. Uh, basically, we're looking at the, the second from the bottom there, the PCIe pipe adapter, trying to, to uh, get the, uh, the left side of this diagram where we're uh, making an uh, adapter between the DIDA iFi and industry standard controllers and specifically PCIe controllers. There's a blow up of this and with a circled. Um, we're looking at, uh, you know, shrinking the board of the package concept here, the specific uh, application. Uh, when, especially when you're talking about a, a bow or other XSR interface, um, uh, it's gonna have a particular interface. And then uh, meanwhile, the pipe interface is a standard interface to, generally PCIe IP, but also CXL. So why pipe? Um, so dotted IFIs, XSR, AIB, and Bo. Uh, we've been over several of these. These, these are chiplet-based or chiplet-based designs, but there's several different FIs. No one FI dominates. Um, and meanwhile, PCIe is a widely used protocol and Intel's pipe, which is PHY interface for PCI Express, is a widely used, probably the most widely used PCI controller interface. So um, with a proper pipe adapter logic layer, we can allow DDD phis to communicate with off the shelf controllers and hopefully without introducing too much uh, you know, PCIe style complexity in the DDD5. Um, so the idea is basically you could take a chip, swap out those DDD5s, um, or swap out the PCIe5s, put in DDD5s with this pipe adapter layer. So here's a quick uh, diagram uh, showing the application here a little more, uh, a little closer. Um, the, the adapter layer, the pipe interface we're talking about is depicted with the red lines. So you're trying to take two chiplets with PCIe MAC controllers, and you wanna make it invisible to them that they're talking to a D to D5 at all. Um, so normally you're taking out the PCIe 5, plugging in this D to D5 with an adapter layer, and therefore the, the red line indicates the pi standard pipe interface. Um, the pipe adapter itself uh, contours to the D to D phi on that chiplet. And they can be, if you notice, they can be from two different vendors provided electrically speaking, these need to be the same D to D phi, but um, you could have, uh, you know, the, the pipe adapters different on each chiplet provided they have the same uh, interface that matches the pipe spec at the red line. So uh, we spent a lot of time in our work group um, and we came down to, we went over and over rules that we wanted to abide by. Um, and so these are the rules, the high level rules we came up with. So rule number one, um, factory configuration. So a lot, of, a lot of times we're talking about the bow phi when we're talking about D to D phi's. Uh, as an example, but uh, we want something that's very low power, very simple to configure and doesn't require a lot of logic complexity. So we want to be able to statically configure that D to D, D, to D phi and yet the PCIe controller has all sorts of link negotiation protocols, part of its bring up. So how do you, the pipe adapter has to handle that. Um, Rule number two, the phi specific lane mapping. Um, D to D phi 
is not going to have the same number of uh, pins as a PCIe lane. So we have to be able to steer traffic over from from one PCIe lane to multiple DVD five lanes or vice versa. It's not likely to be one to one in most cases. Um, rule number three: obey the PCIe LTSSM. So the uh, the, the Mac layer and up through the software stack kind of depend on this link transition state machine. Uh, uh, handshakes being honored between the DeFi and the, the controller. If you want to avoid, you want to avoid having to require logic changes in that controller, you want something off the shelf. So you have to abide by all the pipe interface handshakes um, and also the firmware. Um, sim rule number four, simplified implementation. Uh, so if you know the pipe spec, there are, uh, there's a recent change in version five that introduces the CERTES architecture. So a lot of the link, uh, uh, the skip symbols and the link scrambling and other features, the elastic buffer, those are, uh, or in the original uh, Phi architecture and the original pipe spec, but in the CERTES architecture, a lot of that uh, functionality is stripped out. So this particular guideline, uh, this pipe adapter, uh, uh, only supports the CERTES architecture. And finally, rule number five, uh, implement a subset of the LTSSM state transition. So we don't necessarily want or need all the LTSSM state transitions, um, largely that's talking about power transit, power state transitions. Uh, so we went around and around until we uh, uh, decided on certain terminology, and that is that we would, among the states in the LTSSM, we would either implement them or emulate them. By implement, implement meaning uh, actually uh, implement the, the spirit of the design, meaning that, it, that the, it's truly supported while, while emulated means it just returns the handshake so it doesn't, but it, so it doesn't hang this uh, Mac controller, but it doesn't actually implement the feature. So this is showing the one-to-one the -one interface mapping concept I was talking about, basically it's, it won't be there. For example, on a bow interface, you're likely the PCIe lane is going to map to four bow lanes at Gen 4 rate. Um, I've got some details of that later, but so one thing uh, you you have a you will have a D to D phi, and it may have to merge multiple PCIe lanes into the same D to D lanes or slices, vice versa. Um, so there's some challenges with that, and yet the pipe adapter is defined here as a per lane per PCIe lane interface through the red line there. So uh, there was three, three main things we've gone over in the last year um, that we spent a lot of time on. Number one is uh, what to do with a rate change. So normally you want to configure the DVD-5 statically in the factory, test it at one frequency and go. PCIe requires you come up at Gen 1 rate and then uh, jump to different frequencies. Um, for example, Gen 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how do we bridge that gap? Um, two was to detect uh, the D to D5, very short in-package uh, interface, uh, DC coupled. PCI links are AC coupled by definition electrically. Um, and some of the key detect and electrical idle features depend on AC coupling. So how do you bridge that gap? Um, and low power mode, uh, obviously, uh, the, so it's, and that ties into the tech circuitry. Um, how do you go into a low power state? And then how do you detect uh, wake up? And how do you solve that problem through the pipe interface? Uh, so uh, note about link rates, we looked at Based on the previous picture, um, generally the DDD5 is going to, it's not restricted to this, but you probably want a common P clock across that block. 
Um, and therefore, our the recommendation recommendation we came up with is uh, to fix the peak lock frequency and use valid signals or width changes the throttle link rates per PCIe lane. So, an example on a bow interface, if we pick a peak lock uh, rate of 500 megahertz, we could run Gen 4 as our normal operating rate, but Gen 3 2 we could run reduce the link width and Gen 1 run the lowest link width with the valid. This prevents us from having to change the peak clock rate. You can do that, but then that's provide the, that adds some complexity in clock dividers and so forth. Um, second uh, thing was the DC coupling and DC detect. So basically, you can't do that with the uh, AC, AC, without AC coupling, you can't do that properly. So uh, the tech circuitry, circuitry either needs to be emulated, meaning uh, we're going to return the uh, on the pipe interface, we're going to handshake that we detected all the time, but not actually implement the detect circuitry. And that'll lower the cost and power of that design. Or um, if one wants to, you could uh, design the detect circuitry in the log in the logical pipe adapter in the logic rather than using the, the added circuitry. FI is open to developing the circuitry, but the concern is that uh, if you have a you know like a bow interface with lots of pins and a low a low power target, you don't want to necessarily add all that uh, power and area. Um, okay. So uh, call to action, um, we've been working on a guideline document for a year now or more. Uh, we're continuing, we've mapped all the uh, pipe interface signals. We continue to polish that. Um, we could always use help reviewing and adding to that. Um, then we wanna move on to designing and implementing this pipe adapter for the bow interface and mapping it to bow interface. Um, and also another topic that's kind of on the horizon is we want to look at this pipe adapter, but then we also, if you'll notice in those other documents, we, there's a lot of LPIF uh, applications. So we want to start looking into LPIF as an adapter. So we need to start a guidelines document on that. Um, I have all the links here if you want to get involved um, to the wiki and the mailing list and uh, current pipe adapter document. So lots of people have joined, have, have been in and out on one of them. <laughs> uh, we have been meeting every Tuesday for a year. Uh, thank you to everybody who helped put that together, the document, and we continue to push forward. And uh, thank you. And I'll take questions. Um, Mike, no questions on, but if, um, somebody wanted to join us, I'm assuming they would just, they're pretty much open to anybody coming in right now. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you.